Hi, I'm at the Corsair booth with Jared, who's Global PM for the Flash division. Jared, you've got something interesting to show us. It's red, it looks like it's fast, so talk us through it. Absolutely, so what I'm actually showing here is our uh, new, brand new Sandforce-based uh, Force GT. This is, uh, of course, our typical GT black and red look. But what we're doing is actually providing uh, one of the Sandforce 2000-based SSDs to give you really the fastest speed out there. Okay, the first generation of Sandforce drives gave you about 250 megabytes per second read and write. This one's a fair bit faster. So what numbers are you seeing in your labs? So we, we've seen in our labs as high as 520-ish, uh, 550 550-ish, but uh, quoting still around the 500, 520. So we'll, we'll see where the final comes out, but definitely twice as fast in the range of what you've seen before. So you say final, does that mean you've not quite finished qualification? Or does it mean I can buy it, or enthusiasts can buy it fairly soon? It's going to be fairly soon, but when I say final, uh, Corsair is very dedicated and committed to making sure things are done, totally done. And what that means is final firmware comes out later, and we will quote the specs based on what we're actually shipping. We've been around the show. We've seen a whole bunch of partners with what seems to be the same drive. The Sandforce 2200, is yours any different? And I've, you've spoken about reliability and the way you qualify it, but is there anything physically different about your particular drive than most other people's? Uh, the Sandforce drives are going to be similar from that standpoint, but uh, when we say what's different, it's, it's the components you choose at the end of the day based on a reference design, and it's uh, the way you put it together and, and making sure that, that the reliability is there so that the long term, the drive's going to keep working. And you say the speeds are about 500 megabytes per second. That's pretty close to the SATA 6 barrier. Now, from SATA 3 to SATA 6 took some time. So what will happen when you get faster drives to put these in RAID? And how would you suggest an enthusiast that wants to buy two hooks them up? Uh, so these, these obviously, like you said, it is going to saturate what we're doing on SATA 6 pretty quickly. So. Uh, when you, we're talking about a single drive, that's great. But when you're talking about uh, you know, a good enthusiast system, you get something with uh, one of the Sandy Bridge-based uh, Sandy Bridge systems, you're going to be able to pop two of these in and really see great rate performance. It's going to be almost the same as what you see on some of the PCIe solutions. So. Some companies have taken Sandforce controllers and put them on a PCI Express bus just because of the speed. Yeah. This is crying out for it. So can we expect to see Corsair Force GTs on PCI Express? It's definitely something that we're thinking about. I uh, can't commit to that. You know, future products are, are obviously off limits in terms of what I can and can't tell you to start with. But. And there's also a Sandforce 2500 controller, which is more enterprise driven. We presume you're working closely with Sandforce with that. Any idea or indication of when that's possibly going to come to market? It's something that we're, we're working on uh, as well for soon. Um, and you know, love the guys over at Sandforce on that one. We are, as you said, we are working very closely with uh, with Matt and Jeremy and, and the whole crew over there. But uh, but yeah, it, we are looking at what we do on the the high end for enthusiasts with some of those 2,500 parts. So. so for the enthusiast drives for this year at least, will it only be Sandforce controllers? Uh, for the enthusiast drives, it kind of depends. I mean, we we work very closely with them, but. Corsair's real you know, motivation, what we want to do in SSDs is make sure we're providing the fastest and the best to our uh, enthusiast uh, community. We think that everybody should have an SSD in their system, and I'm pretty sure you agree, although you'll say it should be a Corsair drive. When can we expect to see them drop to a dollar per gigabyte? Because that seems to be the magic figure when people say, yeah, I'm going to get rid of that spindle-based drive, and this new drive's for me. Well, I think it's going to be, it's, it's a, a while off yet before we start to see a dollar per gigabyte. Uh, you know that that depends a lot on the NAND manufacturers. But what we will see is we do expect the back half of this year pricing to come down some because anytime you do a die shrink, you, we, these are all going to be 25 nanometer based. And anytime you do a die shrink, eventually that means cost savings for end users. So. Do you see larger capacities coming on the horizon fairly quickly? Most people, well, we saw 512 gigabyte drives probably a couple of years ago. They might have been dummy samples. But we don't see much bigger than that now. Are terabyte drives on the horizon just because you've got smaller devices which should be cheaper to manufacture? I think uh, in our own line, we're thinking we're not going as far into the terabyte kind of drives yet. But the reason is that uh, most enthusiasts aren't using those. Most of the higher capacity drives are going into kind of business to business applications and enterprise. So for enthusiasts, I think we're probably still talking about capping out at you know 240, maybe 480 kind of range. And the drives you do now are 2.5 inch, which is great for laptops, and it's pretty easy for new chassis or with adapters that you provide in your retail packaging. 
there's a few companies that do 1.8 inch drives, which are pretty quick. Is that something you're looking at? You know, we're always looking at different form factors, and uh, 1.8 1. 1. is an interesting one to go, but for the, for the typical Corsair customer, for the enthusiasts we're talking to, there's just not that many laptops that provide the kind of experience that they want. So it's something that we look at and we want to make sure we're addressing as that market evolves. But initially, like you said, the 2.5s and being able to adapt those to, to fit in your computer to a 3.5 is where we think really the Corsair customer is looking. And being global PM of Flash, it means more than just SSDs. Can you talk a bit about um, the Flash um, department in general and what you're doing with USB 3? Absolutely. So uh, we did just press release earlier this week that we are getting into the USB 3 game, uh, starting off with the Voyager. Uh, Voyager's great because that gives you uh, faster read speeds, uh, but not, not replacing what we do on kind of the high end with our GTRs. But this is just to give you those kind of faster read speeds on the consistent products. We are looking very soon and moving toward having uh, some other offerings to kind of you know, really flesh out the USB 3 offering and have that for Q2. So, right. Okay, well that's Jared, that's the Force GT. It looks really, really quick. We hope to have some in the labs very, very soon. But until then, head back for more on Hexus TV.